Well, good morning one and all. And we've got a little bit of sun poking through. It keeps giving us the odd shower, but there's a little bit of sun poking through. I think we're about 14 or 15 degrees ambient temperature here today. What I'm actually doing is, I'll nip and show you in a second, but what I've been doing outside is getting ready for this new heater. And I've got I've got the area where it's going to go and the slabs that it's going to go on. I've got to cut this box down because it's too long. That'll come up right behind the heater and you can't block the air off to it. So I'm going to have to cut that down and then the pipe that goes across to the heater I shall have to uh, insulate quite well. But that's where the heater is going to stand. Now inside, just give me a second, my cat wants to go in. Go on then. Go on then. Right, inside the actual filter house, it's as windy as heck here today. We'll just have a quick look at the temp. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, just a fraction under 15, nearly 15 degrees. Ambient temperature, but the wind feels cold all the same. Okay, so here in the in the actual uh, filled house itself, I've got everything connected. The wiring's all in. I've gone four mil all the way round to the actual breaker box. A lot of people are saying, "Why do I need a breaker box on these heaters?" You don't. You don't have to add an, a uh, breaker box at all. These heaters are slow start and will run off a normal 13 amp plug so you don't get the power surge when it strikes up so they will just plug into a normal 13 amp plug so they're not a lot of problem at all a lot of the others like the Duratec and them sort of things they will knock an ordinary breaker out mm. so you have to upgrade your breaker if you use them because they're not slow start they just cut straight in and the power surge can just knock a breaker out. I think Adam Julian had to change his on his Duratec because it took the breaker out. I think he put a 20 amp breaker in, I'm not sure. You don't get that power surge that you normally do with most of them. So yes, you can connect them straight onto a 13 amp socket. The reason I've put a breaker box in there, number one is because I had it anyway, I bought it about a year ago and never used it. The second reason I've put that in there is because I run quite a bit of uh, electrics in here. As you know, I'm, I've got air pumps, pond pumps and everything, so it wouldn't actually get to be on a breaker of its own. So in the actual box itself, the main box, I've taken another cable from the live side so it doesn't go through any breakers and brought it round and put it onto this one so it is actually on a breaker but it's on its own breaker it's not having to run anything else on that circuit at all there's no pond pumps or air pumps or anything like that it's not on a circuit with any of that it's got its own circuit and that's the reason I did that if one of the other circuits should accidentally trip, this will still keep going. Now this heater has totally mystified me completely. I've been tinkering about with it again and I've also got it plugged in onto the circuit that I've just put in. Number one, it's testing the circuit and the, the uh, breaker boxes and that, but I'm just having another tinker about with it. They say the weather's gonna come really cold tomorrow and Friday. So I thought I'll use this just to keep the pond temp up so that it doesn't drop for a couple of days and then comes back up again. I thought I'd get it so it, uh, it runs the pond at about 13 degrees and just suffer it for a couple of days. Now this is dead weird. What I've actually done is on the thermostat itself just swing it backwards and forwards just to see if that helped. Now when I put it back on for the first 10-15 minutes it was cutting in and out about every 30 seconds so I thought all right fair enough we'll just see how it goes which I think it was about 45 seconds last time we did it but now for the past half an hour it's cut in and hasn't cut out yet <laughs> so it's run solid for the last half an hour at least and hasn't cut out at all 
whereas it was cutting in and out every 30 seconds. When I first put it on for about 15 minutes, it's been running just over an hour now, and for the last half an hour it hasn't cut out at all, which is weird, very weird. But looking at it, because bear in mind I'm trying to lift the pond temperature, it's not just holding a temperature, I'm lifting it, it's run for about an hour and 10 minutes is that? 12 minutes? It's run for about an hour and 10 minutes, that's its total run time, and we're still only on 37p. Now that's not as much as it was last time I put it on, it was a lot more than that in an hour, but it all of a sudden seems to be running a little bit more economical. So I'm going to just leave that running and see what happens. It's totally mystifying me, this uh, cloverleaf pond heater. I'm not sure what's happening. The stat is really sus. For it to be cutting in and out every 30 seconds, and then all of a sudden just cut in and not cut out at all for half an hour, I, I just can't weigh that up. It's got to be the thermostat in it. So I've probably got one that's got a bit of an iffy thermostat, but what I'm going to do is take it up to 13 degrees. We was on 12.1, we're up to 12.6 at the moment, but that's in the RDF, not the pond. But that's the temperature that's going back to the pond, 12.6, so it should soon lift the pond. I want the water going back to the pond about 13.3. That should come back at about 13, so it should hold it around the 13 mark. So it's obviously not got the pond up to temperature yet, so it's going to use more electric. But I, I think this is using less electric than it was the first time I put it on. Which I don't understand it, but there you go. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to get the pond temp up to 13 with it, and then see how it goes on holding the temperature. But I've been in here five minutes at least talking to you now and it still hasn't cut out. So that's 35, 40 minutes it's been running now and hasn't cut out at all. And like I say, it was cutting out every 30 seconds. So we'll just have to see how it goes. I'll get it up to temperature and then come back to you. The fish are definitely noticing the uh, temperature coming in is that little bit warmer. They're all, they've all come up this end. They've come from the deep end up to this end, so they're obviously noticing that the uh, temperature returning to the pond's that little bit warmer. So they're enjoying that. Okay, we're back in the filter house, about an hour later now, since it cut in and hasn't cut out. And it's still running, so it hasn't cut out for over an hour now. The pond temp, I'll have a quick look at that. The temperature in the RDF is now 12.8, so it's taking the temperature up all the time, but it still hasn't cut out. I don't understand it. From going to cutting in and out every 30 seconds, to just cutting in and staying in, <laughs> but it hasn't reached temperature yet, so I'm going to leave it and see what happens when it reaches the temperature. Whether the stat's stuck or what, I don't know, but I'll find out if it just carries on heating the pond up. But it hasn't cut out for nearly an hour now, so I'm sure I've definitely got a very sauce thermostat in there, and I think that's what the problem is. Well guys, it's now 6 o'clock at night, and the temperature in the RDF, which is obviously what's going back to the pond, I haven't checked the pond temperature yet, but the temperature is between 13.2 and 13.3, so it's holding that temperature now. The actual heater itself is now cutting out, as you can see. It did run for nearly two hours solid, but the amazing bit is on the bottom, it costs £1.50. Now I, I accept that is going to be more expensive because it's heating the pond up. There it's cut back in again. Um, because it's heating the pond up, it's not keeping it at a temperature yet. I wouldn't think the pond's quite at 13 degrees yet, so the water coming back is still obviously cooler, so it is going to cut in and out more. But it ran for nearly two hours solid before it cut out. Now that's totally different to what it's been doing, and last time that uh, £1.57 was a lot more. So I'm <laughs> there, it's gone out again. I'm, oh, now my RDS decided to go off. But, uh, 
I'm really not sure what's going on. It does seem to be working correct now. It's now cutting in for about 30 seconds, 40 seconds probably. Cutting in and out and then it'll cut off for about a minute or more and then cut back in for another 30 seconds. So I'm going to leave it as it is till tomorrow. Then I'll probably zero that clock and see what it costs to hold it at 13 degrees. But there's some real cold weather on the way. So we'll see what it costs. But this is costing less. I don't understand it. This is now costing less than it did before. It's been on since half past ten this morning. And it's now six o'clock at night. And it's only £1.50. £1.57 I think that is. It's a mystery. I'm not quite sure what it's actually doing. But it does seem to be cutting in and out better. It stayed on when it was a degree down. I wanted 13 and it was uh, 12 in the pond. And it did stay on for, like I say, nearly two hours. But now it's cutting in and out on a regular basis. It's only on for about 30 seconds, then cuts out again. So I'm going to leave it, see what happens. But at least I know all my wiring's okay. It's working fine. That's two kilowatt. The air source heat pump I've got coming, to, it's about 1600 when it's on full power. So it should be less. Plus uh, it's inverter, so uh, it should use less power when the pond isn't actually calling for so much heat. So we'll be able to compare the two, but that is now working a lot better than it ever was. But I'm going to leave it running and we'll see what happens. We'll see how it copes with this cold weather that's on the way. At least it'll stop the pond dipping, temperature-wise. Now it is quite windy here today, but I've got a quick question for all you gardeners out there. I've got my winter pansies here and for some reason I don't know why I'll see if I can show you but they are tending to come up a bit naff can you see that they're tending to come up as if they've got some sort of problem the flowers on them aren't very good at all I mean it's every flower if you look at them every flower it's there look Looks like they've got some sort of disease or something. I mean, I've, I bought these and just planted them in the pot, so I have actually given plant food. And for some reason, that one's okay. That one's all right, but for some reason, they're coming up like this. A bit on the, like, scabby side. So all you gardeners out there, if you know the reason they're doing that, let me know, because I haven't got a clue. Just thought I'd just put that question out. Leave it in the comments. If anybody knows what the problem is, let me know. Because they don't look very nice at all. But we've had uh, really bad winds here and it's, it's bent them all down a bit. They was sort of stood up. But if you do know what's causing it, let me know. I'd love to know what the problem is. It was all new potting compost and everything when we put them in. So I don't know, I haven't got a clue. The others don't seem to be too bad in the others. It's just these bigger ones in the pots. What the problem is, I've no idea. But if you have, let me know. If there's something I can do about it, I'd like to know. So leave it in the comments. Any help would be gratefully appreciated. Right, so we're back here in the uh, filter house and I had a day where I let the pond heater lift the pond temperature to 13. It was at 12, but it lifted it to 13. So I gave it 24 hours to do that, so it was, everything was at a good temperature. So then I reset the power meter. So it's now been running 24 hours. But last night, well, we had one heck of a frost. Two to three degrees was the ambient outside temperature. I've got to go and dip the pond yet, but I think the actual heater itself was struggling a little bit against them sort of temperatures. The uh, temperature in the RDF, which is where it's sending the water to, has dropped to about 12.8. It was 13.4 and holding that until last night and it's now dropped to 12.8 so we've lost about 0 0.6 degrees about half a degree off the temperature the temperature outside at the moment is still only five degrees 
but the big question is in those 24 hours where it's been running and just trying to hold it at 13 degrees what is the cost so if we have a look at the meter itself it's not uh, on at the moment but we've got two pound 56 which is roughly well less than half of what it was costing in the first place and in the first place it was only um, holding that 13 degrees with an ambient temperature of around 11 and 12 degrees so obviously it's had to work a lot harder last night because of the ambient temperature outside in the 24 hours it's cost £2.56 just gone up to 57 it is working hard I must say trying to hold it at the 13 degrees obviously it's going to work harder I mean I've got everything insulated that I possibly can I've actually got a little tiny heater in here in the actual filled house and it's keeping a temperature in here of between 12 and 14 degrees but I don't want the temperature in here down to two or three degrees because none of these filters are insulated so I want to keep the temperature in here reasonably stable I could actually buy some polystyrene these would be quite easy to insulate really the shed is well insulated as you know I've got uh, a good thickness of polystyrene everywhere at six o'clock this morning the shed roofs was absolutely they was covered in frost so we did get a good old frost last night and like I say it's only about five degrees outside now and this is ten o'clock in the morning so I expected it to use a little bit more but that's only using less than half of what it was in the first place and it wasn't doing the work <laughs> so I really don't know I did start to think, well is it this um, power meter? Is there something wrong with that? But I've kept my eye on it and it seems to be working fine. I haven't noticed a problem with that at all. The temperature has took a real dip. The heater is working, well, twice, three times as hard as it was. And it's only used half of the electricity. <laughs> so if you can work that one out, you're a good one. But my new one, it'll be on the way soon. I've got another week to wait for that. We'll get that plumbed in and see how that goes. And I should just leave this in as a backup. But on a 2,500 gallon pond, it is working hard. If I wanted the temperature any higher out there, it would really struggle. Because it was really doing well on electricity till, like I say, we got the frost last night. It was only about a pound on there when I went to bed, but it's used one pound fifty trying to keep the temperature up through the night. I might uh, treat myself to an external stat. I don't think they're that dear. Connect it up to that and see how it runs with that. But it does seem to be working okay now. It does seem to be working right, whereas it didn't in the first place. But that's it, that's where we are at the moment with it. It does seem to be working a lot, lot better than it was when I first put it in. It's in and working, I'm going to leave it running now till the new heater comes. They're saying the weather's going to come a little bit milder, so it should uh, back off a little bit. I hope that'll give you guys a bit better idea of how it's running than I did in the last video. It had obviously got problems. Right guys, I am outside here as you can see and I'm just doing the pond temp so we're going to have a look at that we are running, it's 12 and a half in the pond so we're losing half a degree due to this cold weather it is cold out here, I have to say it's, it's not very warm but yeah, we're losing half a degree it isn't keeping up, basically I think my amount of water is too much for it but it will do as an emergency backup it's not big enough for my pond volume obviously because it's not keeping the temperature up there I can't wait to get my new heater now everything's ready for it as you've seen I've done all the uh, base for it it's all ready to go in I've got the electrics ready for it I've just got to find a bit of cable because they don't come with cable so I want to uh, get a bit of cable for it. All them pipes I've just insulated quick just to keep the heat in till it gets here and then we can sort them out properly. 
Right, well down here in the big shed, I have actually got the box cut down. I've got it cut down to size. I've taken the insulation out of it for the moment. But what I've just thought about, and this, this is my mistake, the pipe that comes out obviously comes up and goes across here. Well, that'll be going into the heater. But I've just realised I've got a pipe coming off, which will be the bypass. And I don't think this is tall enough to take that pipe. So it would have to come out of the top. So I've had to abandon that for the moment to find out exactly where the pipe work goes. So I'm not sure whether this will work or not. And I'm not going to know until I get the pipe work in. So <laughs> I've abandoned that for now. This is the layout of the pipe work I shall be using. I think I've shown you this before. This will, this is the ex coming from the existing pipe. This will carry on and go straight into the heater. This is the one coming out, going back into the filter house. Now the bypass will be here. So if I switch this tap off, the water will be div diverted up here across the top and then into the filled house bypassing the heater so I can shut this tap off to the heater and this tap off to the heater and just use the bypass if I wish but this bypass I'm sure is going to come higher than the actual box I've made so I've probably got to uh, change all the box but I'm not going to know that until I get the heater and find out just where and just what height the pipes have got to be at to go into the filter house. So I've had to abandon the box for now until we know exactly where the pipe works going to go. Well, good morning everybody. And yet again, we're back in the filter house and talking about this heater. But I'm gonna make it very quick. I came down this morning, earlier on, about an hour or so ago, looked at the thermostat on the wall and the temperature in the RDF was 14.1 <laughs> so it decided to heat the pond up another degree last night for some reason and it's put over another four quid on the electric meter so yes it is the stat if you buy one of these don't trust the thermostat on it <laughs> my pond is now at about 13.8, 13.7 something like that so it's just decided to heat it up another degree for no reason whatsoever <laughs> it was set and cutting out at 13.3 in the RDF and that was the temperature it was sending back to the pond last night it got to well over 14 in the RDF it was sending back and like I say my pond's at about 13.7 13.8 and it's cost me four pounds something overnight that's just overnight by the way to do that and it was still working at over 14 degrees it was still cutting in now with these cloverleaf heaters I have to say this is at least the fifth time and this is just since I've been messing about with it this is the fifth time I've heard of people having to fit an independent stat on them because the stats don't work now to be honest, you think they're a good little heater, but at 170 pounds, you think they would put a better quality thermostat on it for that sort of money. I think they're vastly overpriced for what they are. So if you're thinking of buying one of these, that's fine, but just realize that you want to be buying an external stat for it. The one that comes with it, I wouldn't trust at all, I'm afraid. The point is now I was going to use it until my heater comes but I just can't trust it. I'm liable to come down one morning and my pond temperature is going to be at 15 or 16 degrees or something silly. So you never know. So I'm, I'm going to order an external stat because I want to use it as a backup. I really ought to send it back and get my money back I suppose. But it will do as a backup if anything should happen to my air source heat pump. So I'm going to order an external thermostat for it and get it uh, running through that. But if you're thinking of buying one, I wouldn't trust the stat on them at all. And like I say, for the money they're charging, it's a lot of money for something that doesn't work properly. 
Anyway guys, I've ranted on enough about this heater, that's all I'm going to say about it. I just wanted you guys to know uh, what was going on and what the outcome is. So uh, it's now up to you. That's my finding on this Cloverleaf 2 kilowatt pond heater. Anyway guys, it's time I'm afraid for me to say thanks for watching. You all take care and as always, happy ponding.